It is a new year of fall high school sports and it is a whole new season of the scoreboard show. We enter the 10th season with our 100th episode. For 11 weeks, we're going to take you around central and western Kansas to various high school sporting events in golf, tennis, soccer, cross country, volleyball, and football. Over the years, we have evolved from your TV screen to online with our website to social media. We will kick off tonight's show right after this. Presentation of Scoreboard Show, Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to the 100th episode of the Scoreboard Show. I'm Troy Waymaster. Later in the show, my partner Casey McAvoy will be in with all the football action from tonight, along with highlights from Thursday night's Lina South Derby matchup. But first up tonight, we'll take a look at the scores from some of the football games. And if you want to get involved with the show, give us a call with your score at 1-800-337-4788, extension 141. That is a handful of the scores from tonight's football action, and we'll take another look at the scores following the football highlights later in the show. You can also view the scores online at scoreboardshow.tv and click on the week you wish to view. Now let's take a step back to earlier in the week with volleyball action. The School Board Show traveled to Halstead last Saturday for the Central Kansas League preseason volleyball tournament. Teams participating included Pratt, Nickerson, Heston, Haven, Kingman, Hillsboro, Lions, Smoky Valley, Sterling, and the host, Halstead Dragons. Pool play began the day at the high school and middle school on four courts. First, we catch up with Pool A action featuring the Haven Wildcats taking on the Smoky Valley Vikings. 
The Vikings start the first set with strong kill shots to keep the lead over Haven, but the Eagles keep it close. The Vikings get the momentum back and go on to win 25-15. The Eagles show that they are not ready to give up and take the second set 25-16. This forces a third set and the score goes back and forth with neither team having a great advantage. After a close set, Smoky Valley pulls ahead and wins the match with a 25-20 score. Next we see the Hillsboro Trojans, which were ranked number one in 3A state preseason rankings. They face the Kingman Eagles and show their dominance by not allowing the Eagles to gain any advantage. The Trojans finish strong, winning 25-9 and 25-10. Now we see the Lions of Lions facing the Black Bears of Sterling in Pool A action. It was back and forth on the scoreboard in the first set, with neither team able to gain any momentum. The Black Bears go on to victory over the Lions with a 25-17 first set win. But that angered the Lions and they came roaring back to win the second set and force a third. Sterling goes on to win the match and advance the championship bracket. We can now catch up with the match between the Nickerson Panthers and the Heston Swathers. Heston wins the first set 25-17 and in the second set, the Panthers step up their game and play out some long points. At one point, the score was tied 15 all but the Swathers got on a roll and pick up the victory. Heston's win to advance to the championship bracket. The top four teams were Hillsborough, Pratt, Sterling, and Heston. Final result had Hillsborough taking first, Heston finished in second, Pratt took third, Sterling was fourth, Smoky Valley took fifth, Haven finished in sixth place, Halstead was seventh, Kingman took eighth, Nickerson ninth, and Lyons next in tenth place. School board's cameras were in Healy last Saturday for the Healy Invitational Volleyball Tournament. Golden Plains, Moscow, Rolla, Heartland Christian, Wallace County, Shilin, and Western Plains were in attendance. The tournament started with pool play as each team got a feel for their opponents. But soon Wallace County, Moscow, Heartland Christian, and Golden Plains moved forward to bracket play. In the end, it was Wallace County that took the tournament, narrowly beating Heartland Christian 25-22 and 25-23. Golden Plains beat Moscow to take third place. On Monday, the Hayes High Lady Indians hosted the season opening invitational golf tournament at Smoky Hill Country Club. The weather was nearly perfect for the nine teams participating, which included Dodge City, Garden City, Great Bend, Hutchison, Liberal, TMP Marion, and the host, the Lady Indians. Garden City took the top two medals and also the team title with a 188, 19 strokes ahead of runner-up Hayes High. Junior Abby Shaddix was the overall winner by carding a 39. Lady Buffs teammates Abby Campbell finished in second with a 40, and Lindsay Bradstreet took eighth with a 51. Hayes High's Lexi Shaven shot a 46 for fourth place and led her teammates to a second place finish as a team. Alyssa Kim of Salina Central was third with a 45 and led her team to finish in third at 213. Salina South's Michaela Nixon took fifth with a 47. Teammate Caitlin Korn was two strokes behind with a 49 good for sixth place. Evan Sumner of Liberal finished seventh with a 50. Courtney Hess of the host Lady Indian shot a 51 to take eighth. Whitney Winner of Dodge City shot a 53, making the top 10 finish. Other team scores were Salina South fourth, Dodge City took fifth, Great Bend sixth, followed by Liberal, Hutchinson, and TMP Marion. The Ellsworth Invitational Tennis Tournament on Tuesday featured teams from Central Plains, Concordia, Ellenwood, Trinity Catholic, Lions, Smoky Valley, Trigo Community, and the host Ellsworth. Playing at the high school in Kryzik Park, number one singles was won by Smoky Valley's Jessica Van Rankin. Rachel Herzog of Ellsworth took second, Oma Thomas of Ellenwood took third, Brianna Schartz of Central Plains finished in fourth place. Heather Crane of Lions was fifth, and Concordia's Danielle Time took sixth. The number one doubles champs were the Central Plains team of Katie Hip and Janae Heckley. They defeated the runner-up team of Emma Anderson and Hannah Morical of Sm Smoky Valley. Third place went to Ellenwood's team of Rachel Dahl and Danae Patton, who defeated Emily Trigg and Heather Letourneau of Concordia. Fifth place went to Ellsworth's Julia Hood and Ashley Sippel. Trinity Catholic's Christina Entlinger and Bailey Reed finished in sixth place. Overall team scores were led by Central Plains in first, Smoky Valley second, Concordia third, Ellsworth took fourth, Ellenwood was fifth, Trinity Catholic sixth, Lions came in seventh, and Trinity Community was in eighth. 
Thursday, the Hayes High Indian soccer team hosted the McPherson Bullpups for their home opener. It was a defensive struggle throughout the first period with the Bullpups taking several shots on goal and the Indians hardly getting any scoring opportunities. Indian goalkeeper Joshua Johnson keeps several shots from getting into the net. This corner kick by McPherson's Dylan Babcock nearly works, but is stopped short of the goal. The first period ends in a scoreless tie. Hayes High has an opportunity to get close to the goal with this corner kick, but is well defended by the Bullpups. Then with a little over 10 minutes left in the match, McPherson's Connor Schaefer gets a free kick that sets up a tap in by Peter Horton. The scoreboard finally lights up 1-0 in favor of the visitors. Despite a few more attempts, final score, McPherson 1, Hayes High 0. It was a hot and dry afternoon at the Lincoln Golf Course, side of the Lincoln Cross Country Invitational. In attendance were Sylvan, Minneapolis, Canton Galva, El Saline, Wakefield, Lakeside, and Wilson, among some others. First race, the boys. Blazing ahead of everyone was El Saline's own Forrest Dreher, with 19 minutes and 3 seconds. Almost a, almost a full minute ahead of his closest competitor, Wilson's Creighton Reeves. Third place went to Joe Huerta of Tescott with a time of 20 minutes and 6 seconds, followed by Hunter Klein of Lincoln with 20 minutes and 36 seconds. Then it was Brock Barrett of Wakefield, followed by Bennington's Lucas Garrett and Gunnar Mick. In team scores, Wakefield took first place, followed by Minneapolis and Bennington in second and third, respectively. Now it was the girls' turn, and the day had not gotten any cooler. First place went to the home team, as Jenna Ferris cleared the course in 12 minutes and 55 seconds, more than a whole minute ahead of Eileen Mick of Osborne, who took second place. After her was Katie Adams of El Saline, followed by Anna Trahan of Minneapolis. Brittany Harlow of Lincoln came in next. Then it was Lucy Giles of Minneapolis in sixth place, followed by Michaela Laughlin of Bennington, Sierra Taylor of Wakefield, and Katie Yarrow of Wakefield. In team scores, Lincoln took the number one spot, followed by Elseline in second, and Tescott in third. That wraps up the first half of our 100th episode. And that only leaves the Thursday night football game between the Salina South and Derby, along with all the football action from the night. Casey will be in with football action from tonight's games right after this short break. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from Cardinal T-Shirts, providing direct-to-garment printing with no design or setup fees. No minimums required. Also offering embroidery services for hats, shirts, and jackets. Cardinal T-Shirts, located at 821 North Main Street, Hoisington, inside Cardinal Pharmacy. Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Welcome to the 2012 edition of the award-winning football highlight program we like to call the Scoreboard Show and happy to be in our 10th season. Hey Friday Night fans, I'm Casey McAvoy and glad to be back for my junior year of hosting this show in our 100th episode. The two-a-days are over and now we see how that hard work has paid off. Our first fight this season takes us to Salina South. The Football Salina South Cougars, number four ranked in the state. brought to you in part by Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit. Your local spray coop and Apache dealer. Four in the state take the field. The Ark Valley Chisholm Trail battle with the Derby Panthers. Stonebreaker takes a snap. Mike Jones tackled by Tyler West after a nice gain. Cameron Weiser punts for South High Flying Kick. Kellen Sims to return. Great run down the far sideline before Mike Jones brings him down. Chandler Chanson shotgun fakes and it's keeper. He's in for the score while he stands 6-4. Transfer from Bueller already getting eyes from the Big 12 and Big 10. Stonebreaker gives to Cody Boosby. He brings it to the near side. Gets a double-digit game tackled by Travis Young and Marcus Hicks. Stonebreaker throwing spirals up to Zach Nackbar. The 6-2 junior leaps up to catch it and is immediately brought down by Alec Martin. 
Crowd says go Big Green and Gold. Salina South. Chance with the quick give. Tyler West gives to his best sweep spot. He finds it. Stonebreaker, knack bar, cross field with room to run. Reed Treese and Travis Young finally tracking back. Stonebreaker punches through the line. It's a pass play. Kellen Sims is open. Makes a move. Oh, and look how sweet it is. Here's a game changing play right here, folks, as Young right here picks off Stonebreaker and gets a nice return on a great defensive play. Chance be doing the happy dance, scoring for Derby. Salina does get another touchdown, but it wasn't as enough as Derby wins this one, 27 to 14. Off we go to Stafford at Central Plains. Austin Sanini running behind the brick wall of Taylor Newell, tackled by Colton's wing. The big O with the big push right here. Touchdown, Central Plains. Here's some fun football for you. Ethan Johnson on the fake punt. Cody Price on the tackle. Lane Beaverly taken farther back than he wanted to be by the stout Afford D. Rice Steiner redemption pass to Joe Barton. Touchdown, Central Plains. And we go to the Celtics. Take the field away from the Hutch Trinity into unknown territory versus the Salina Sacred Heart Knights. Nick Withune at quarterback, scrambling to the near side. This is a few tackles, and he's got room to run, and he's got room to run for a touchdown. Bryce Strecker at quarterback for the Celtics, and he's tackled in the backfield by unidentified Knight. Aaron Dieterich, complete, tackled by Chad Pauley. Michael Deaton at quarterback, Finds room to run, tackled by a host of Knights. And we go left side to Nathan Eisenbarth. He's finally brought down Tony Chavez. With Dune pass, Dieterich, and Salina Sacred Heart will take this one, 42 to six. Silva Lucas, another new head coach, Ben Labertu, who returns to his alma mater to face his former team in the Natoba Tigers. Colin Hurd gives to Kevin Lopez, and he's tackled by Jacob Chambry and Kel Hooper. Harold tossed to Lopez, left side, tackled by Philip Murphy. It's the Harold and Lopez show tonight at Natoma. Lopez finding room to run, gets a first down and more, and more would be a touchdown. Kick off, and Natoma to return and fumble. Derek Cooter recovers. And here we Lopez. Near side out at the half of the half yard line. Here's the fullback's favorite place to be at the one and give Brogan Naylor the ball. Silva Lucas 44 and Atoma 20. West K and Coyotes versus the Palco Roosters. Brandon Escamilla returning the kickoff. And he thought he's going to come near side. Ah, he's going to go far side. Going down the far sideline, run in east and west, finally north and south, out of bounds. Sam McKinney, you go, go, says Stetson Nape in the backfield. Cheer, 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 cheer some more. Back to pass, McKinney. And it's a wobbly weevil, but he finds Escamilla wide open for the touchdown. They're going to scramble to the near side for the two-point conversion. Deep corner, cut, converted in sportsmanship. Robert Martin kickoff. Chase Newell to return. Whole lot of shoving going on, and West Kent takes this one 48-6. State champion Thunder Ridge Longhorns returning only two starters from each side of the ball. Rockfield Grizzlies, Derek Reed. 
gives Trevor low. He's tackled by Robbie Dean. Low outside over the first down marker. Tackled by Joel Brockelman. Chance couple at quarterback. And wide open with a neck guard is Wyatt Flynn. And he walks the tightrope on a good gain. Tackled by Derek Gomes. Brockelman going to the far side. Room to run. First down and a touchdown. Here we go. Chance Koppel is going to run this one in for the score. Rock Hills takes this one 62 to 16 over the former state champs. Moving from 5 to 6A, the Hutch Salthawks return 10 on defense, 7 starters on offense. The number rank in their class, Turner. Wide open is Evan Gaines. Grism for the Hutch Salthawks. Touchdown. Head coach, Randy Dryling. Turner, hand off to Tyvon Brown. And Turner some more, turning corners, making people miss tackles out of bounds. And up the gut goes Tyvon Brown, TB for TD. The Salina Central Mustangs try to muster up some offense. Incomplete. And back we go to the salt side. Turner on the carry and Turner some more. Hutchison goes 48 to 14 over Salina Central. Gonna hold on to that number one ranking for a while and Turner some more. Carrying people as far as he can go. And here we go, 3A versus 5A. Coach versus former assistant coach. Bryce Beck and shotgun for Great Ben, intercepted by Hagen Hensley. Cardinal offense, Hensley who got the pick, picks it off himself, returns a favor, Greg Burley on the interception. Beck to Jonathan Alande, inside the five. First and goal for the Panthers. Touchdown. Looks like we have a pick pass. He grabs it though. And he'll go in for the score after a pick pass. Almost incomplete. Way to make something out of nothing. Nolan McCurry on the reception. Great Bend will take this one 14 to six with a good David and Goliath battle here. Don't forget to tune in next week for another edition of the Scoreboard Show. We're happy to share our 100th episode with you. I'm Casey McAvoy, and here's some more action from your area high schools.
presentation of Scoreboard Show. Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Well, that wraps up week one of the 10th season of our 100th episode of the Scoreboard Show. Starting tomorrow, our cameras will be crisscrossing the state to bring you highlights of high school sports from throughout Central and Western Kansas. And you can follow us on Twitter to find out the events that we're going to be along with show updates and other information. Until next time, remember to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attention of our cameras. And next time, we just might see you on the School Board Show. Good night and have a good Labor Day weekend.